Good morning, family. Well, I am so excited to join us this morning as we continue this sermon series, One Word That Can Change Your Life. Pray with me. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this opportunity just to take a moment to dive into the word that you have given to us. God, I pray that in this moment, you would quiet our hearts and quiet our minds so that we can hear the words you have us to hear, so we can see the vision that you have for our lives, so we can walk into the destiny and the path that you have set forth for us. God, we love you on today. We thank you, we honor you, we praise you, and we are ready to receive a word from the Lord. It's in your name we pray, amen. So family, as as I said, we are jumping still into this sermon series, One Word That Can Change Your Life. I want to tell you, I grew up in Columbia, South Carolina, until my husband and I moved here to Houston in 2018 after we got married. And one of the biggest adjustments that I've had to make since moving here is adjusting to the weather. Now, typically, you've got, you know, spring, summer, fall, and winter, unless you live in Texas. Then you've got November, December, January, and summer. I mean, it's just hot, like all the time. It's hot. It's, it's hot in August. It's hot in October. It's hot in February. But I love it. I love it. But in addition, when you factor in the humidity, I mean, not only do you have to like add a new season, but you need a new hairstylist. I mean, you got to work with what you got. But there are changes that I have had to make as I have had to adjust to the change in seasons. I don't know if you know where I'm going, but the one word that can change your life is seasons. And while the weather is a great natural example, it gets a little bit deeper than that. I'm not just talking about the seasons of the year. I'm not just talking about how the weather changes or how the earth sits on the axis and how the sun warms one side and cools the other. I'm talking about seasons of our lives. I'm talking about um, how we measure our lives. There's a song from a musical called Rent. It goes 525,600 minutes. 525,000 moments so dear. How do you measure a year? They suggest that you measure a year in daylights and in sunsets, in midnights or cups of coffee, in inches, in miles, in laughter, in strife, or in love. The truth is that while we may reference a year to something that may have happened in our lives, our hearts and our minds remember the season. The season of grief after the death of a friend or the season of turmoil after a divorce, the season of excitement after welcoming a new baby, the, the season of pain after a big transition that maybe you weren't expecting, the season of struggle after getting your degree, the season of trying to find a job before you get that right offer. We measure our lives in seasons. What seasons have defined your life? What seasons have made you who you are? What seasons do you remember? The joys, the sorrows, or maybe there was just a season where you know what? Wasn't necessarily a high, wasn't necessarily a low, things were just okay. There are dates attached to these events in our lives and while the calendar gives us time, God who loves us and is so gracious to us, he gives us seasons. He gives us seasons. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about seasons. The first thing I wanna tell you is that every season has purpose. Will you turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes? We're gonna to go to the third chapter. Again, that's Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. And I'm gonna start with the first verse and it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, I don't like to be cold, but I appreciate when the ground freezes so we don't have as many bugs in the spring. 
because I would rather deal with a little bit of cold than a little bit of bugs. I don't know if anybody can relate to me on that, but if I see a bug, I'm running in the other direction. Somebody come get it because it is not me. I asked the question, why is the, the winter so important to the earth? Because it can't just be because I don't like bugs. But, but the winter is also important because in some place where the snow falls over the, ice, over the mountains, when, when that snow melts, the water goes back in to refill the, the reservoirs and the rivers throughout the world. And, and why is the rainy season so important? Because how else will the grass grow? How else will the flowers bloom? Every season has purpose. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Why, why did I have to sleep on my friend's couch for three months? Why, why did I have to go through that season? Maybe so I could appreciate when I found a space that I could call my home. Why did I have to file for bankruptcy? Maybe so that I could learn how to manage my finances in the next season. Or maybe so that I could learn how to be a good steward so that I can learn what it feels like to fail. Because maybe that's how I'll know how to succeed. Why, why did my business have to fail? I was speaking to a friend of mine who was, who was an entrepreneur and I would say she's rather successful. But her first business failed. And then her second business failed. Then her, her third business is it, still going, but it, it may not necessarily be what she would want it to be later on. Her next business started off the gate and, and she's fulfilling the vision that she had set forth. And I asked her, why, why did you keep going? Why didn't you quit? Why didn't you stop the first or the second failure? And she said to me, because Ricky, if I hadn't learned how to fail, I wouldn't know how to succeed. If I hadn't learned what not to do, then I wouldn't have a better idea of what to do. If I hadn't gone down the wrong path, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't appreciate this, this right path. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be gracious to others who may also be going down paths that they shouldn't. Maybe, maybe we don't understand the why. And to be honest, there are some seasons where I look back and I, I see the why and I get it and it makes sense. And if I'm honest, I still wouldn't want to repeat it. But I thank God for what I learned when. I thank God for the tears that I cried when. I thank God for his grace that he showed me when, for how he covered me when, how, how I learned that he is a keeper when. Every season has purpose. Can I call on David, who was a shepherd who was defending sheep long before he defended the army of the Lord? Or can I call on Joseph, who took lessons from the pit to the palace? Can I call on Elizabeth, who was barren for years, so much so that it was hilarious to her husband that she was supposed to have a child? Can I call on Elizabeth and maybe suggest that Elizabeth could not get pregnant until Mary was going to get pregnant? Because as much as Elizabeth needed Mary, Jesus needed John. They were connected, Mary and Elizabeth, in their pregnancy. And Jesus and John were connected in their destiny. Maybe, just maybe, the purpose of that season yeah, whatever it is that you're thinking of right now, that season that you may not have figured out, maybe it's the one that you're in right now, maybe, just maybe, the purpose for that season is tied to someone's destiny. I would say it's tied to your destiny. I would say it's tied to your children's destiny, your siblings' destiny, your ancestors, even it's tied to their destiny. Every season has a purpose. And while every season has a purpose, let's be honest, it also has problems. Every season has problems. One of those problems is that seasons change. As soon as we get used to one thing, we have to deal with something else. My mama always said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Hmm. As soon as I've adjusted, 
As soon as I've gotten my hair accustomed to the Houston humidity, the season changes, and then I have to deal with rain. As soon as I, I figure out what I'm going to do to deal with the rain, then we're dealing with hurricanes. I, the seasons change. And the problem isn't so much that the seasons change. The problem maybe more so is that we get so comfortable and we get so settled. And yes, we should be content. Amen. Thank you, God, for contentment in every single season that we're in. But they say if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And so we have to make sure that we're ready whenever the season changes, whenever God says it's time to shift, whenever God says it's time to go, whenever God says it's time to come, whenever God says that you need to do something, we have to be ready for the change. And a lot of the words that can change your life that we've talked about have been action words. But to be honest, our life changes aren't always things that we do. Sometimes it's things that are done to us. Sometimes it is situations beyond our control. And I would suggest that maybe the seasons, they may not be in your control, but you can control how you respond. You can control how you move when God says move. You can control how you open up your heart and your mind to whatever purpose God has for you. If we continue in Ecclesiastes, verse 2 says there is a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which has been planted. My husband just started a garden, and he's getting really good at this thing. But I know that at some point, the season is going to change. And the tomatoes, they may not grow year-round. The, the green beans might not grow year-round. I'm working on growing some watermelon. I don't even know if we're going to make it to one watermelon, much less two. But the season is going to change. Ecclesiastes 3.3 3 says it's a time to kill and a time to heal. I love building season. It's a time to break down. It's a time to build up. I love to build, but sometimes you have to go through demolition day first. You have to know what needs to be brought down before you can build up. That next verse, there's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. I know you have your guard up, but there is a time to bring that guard down. I know you built up some walls because of things that may have happened to you or things that someone may have said to you, but I feel like I hear the Lord saying, it might be time for some of those walls to come down. When my husband and I started dating, the hardest transition was me accepting help. I don't know who this is for, but one day my husband called me and I was sweating, out of breath. I don't know if I was putting together a bookshelf or trying to check the oil in my car. I mean, who knows? But I was an independent woman. And he said, babe, you know, I can help with stuff like that. Now, I tell you, I haven't pumped gas in three years. I don't even know how to check the oil in the car we drive. I, I don't know because I let him take care of that because I decided, I just decided to take all the walls down. I said, here, babe, whatever you want to do, I receive it. I accept it. I thank you for it. I don't know who needs to hear this, but sometimes those stones that you build up and make walls, sometimes it's, it's time to let in a new friend. It's time to go back to, to, to that relationship that the Lord has told you to mend. Maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's a time to cast away stones or a time to gather stones. A time, verse 6, there's a time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend, verse 7, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. As soon as I figure out how to shut my mouth, God said, no, it's time for you to speak up. As soon as I get comfortable in a season of silence, God said, no, no, no. There is a word that you need to say that needs to come out of your mouth. There is truth to power that you must say. I don't, I don't know, but we do have to understand that there are times and seasons for both. There are times to be quiet, but there are also 
times to speak. Verse eight says a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What season are you in? Do you know your season? It's okay if you don't, because we can pray about it. We can ask God about that season, but we have to be aware of a couple problems. One problem is other people's perspectives. See, other people can look at the season you're in and they can insert their opinion. Well, why aren't you married yet? Mind your business. Why don't you have kids yet? Mind your season. Why haven't y'all about built a house yet? Well, we bought a house. Is that not good enough? This is the season that I am in and I, I receive it. I accept it. Everything is on schedule. Everything is on schedule. Everything is in season. And sometimes if we're not careful, we'll walk outside in the middle of this Houston heat in a turtleneck just because somebody else has on a turtleneck on the other side of the world in a totally different climate, in a totally different environment, worrying about what somebody else thinks or keeping up with somebody else. But you have to know your season. What time is it for you? Another problem that we have is our own perspective because while people do insert their opinions and they put pressure and they make assumptions and they say what you should do and how your life should look, we do the same thing. We do, the, without anybody else's help, we second guess where we are. Without anybody else's help, we want to be as good as the next man. Without anybody else's help, we question our own seasons. Grief is real, and sometimes we're grieving disappointments. We're grieving unmet expectations. We're, we're grieving goals that we have not yet reached because we're looking at what other people may be doing or where other people may be going. But we have to address our feelings. We can't stuff it. We can't internalize it. We can't shut up about it. We can't run from it. We have to find the resources that are available. We have to take care of our mental health. We have to take care of our hearts. We have to guard our heart with all diligence from other people and from ourselves. Because if we don't, we'll forget that every season has purpose. Now, every season has purpose. Every season has problems. But I'm glad we don't stay there. I'm glad that every season Every season has a promise. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in his time. See, seasons may change, but God does not. People may change, but God remains the same. He still has a hope and a future for us. He still says that we are the head and not the tail. He still says that we are the lender and not the borrower. He still says that we are free. We are redeemed. We are liberated. We are bought with a price. He still says, you are my son. You are my daughter. He still says, you are a queen. You are a king. He still says that we are his. So surely there's something on the other side of your season. Surely there is joy on the other side of pain. Surely, you heard that verse, joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Mm. He gives us beauty for ashes. I, I, I do not like to be cold. I like to be cool because I want to put on a scarf. You know, I have some cute scarves. I have not had a chance to wear any in the last three years, but it's fine because, you know, we can go on a trip to where it's cold somewhere, right? I don't like to be cold, but have you ever been in the mountains and waken up to mountains covered in snow? How beautiful that is just to look out and just this breathtaking view. Have you, have you ever been caught in the rain and thinking, gosh, like this rain is awful, like I hate this. But then you catch a rainbow out of the corner of your eye dancing across the sky. I don't know about anybody else, the, the last time that we were meeting in church, I was very pregnant and I was tired and I was like, all right, this is miserable. And then labor and delivery was a whole nother story, but the sound of my daughter's cry 
sounded like the fulfillment of the promise that that it wasn't gonna the pain wasn't gonna last always i know you pulled some late nights i know you wrote a lot of papers i know that you had to push but doesn't that degree look good didn't it feel good to walk across the stage i know that the home buying process is a headache that you have to make sure you cross every T and you dot every I. You can't buy everything you want to buy. I understand, but isn't there such a feeling of relief when you do finally get your own home? I mean, every season has a purpose. And while there, be, there may be problems and, and while there may be issues, while there may be things that you have to press really hard to get through and to get past, every single season has promise. So what season are you in? What promise has God made you? Or what promises are you seeking to be fulfilled in this season? Maybe you're still in the thick of it. Maybe you're still really trying to figure this thing out. Maybe you're waiting on your testimony, waiting for it all to be okay. But 2 Peter 3, 9 says, God is not slack concerning his promise. Another scripture says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, will he not do it? Won't he make it good? God has given us some promises. And regardless of where you find yourself in this season, whether you're sowing and waiting on the reaping, or whether you're rejoicing, whether you're, whether you're mourning, or you're graduating, or applying for schools, we have to know that regardless of where we are in season, it's our season, it's our time. And while your season has purpose, You got to push through the problems so that you can walk in God's promise. Thank you.